I think we should talk about this uh, Drake thing and uh, Drake and uh, Kendrick Lamar. You know, um, I didn't know about this, by the way. I didn't know. I didn't know uh, this was going on either. Apparently, they're beefing. Uh, we we used to hear that word a lot on the show back when uh, you know back in the day. Back in the day, we were talking about. Plus, it's a fun word to say. Beefing. I like to say it with a deep voice. Beefing. Uh, they've got beef. That was deep. But uh, uh, somewhat. Uh, I think it'll go a little lower. Now, what what it reminded me of, though, uh, longtime listeners <laughs> might might recall, and this this goes back several years now. Do you but, remember? But uh, longtime listeners might recall, or even if or if you've been following me on uh, social media for many years, uh, that I once had a uh, a beef uh, with uh, MC Hammer, of course. Yes, uh, the MC Hammer. Uh, for uh, for several months, I lived in uh, constant fear that MC Hammer was going to come to New Hampshire and murder me. It was very frightening. He called the show one day. He was very threatening. You know, and we of course, see the location on the ID too. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, um, yeah, that's right. They were coming to get you. That's right. It was. Um, where does he live? I'm trying to remember now. Oakland, Oakland, California. Yeah, and it started showing up quite a bit on your. Your top locales for listening. That actually is true. That really that actually happen. is true on on, on my uh, my web analytics. Which I, I, really I was get, I was getting web traffic out of Oakland, California. That part that part's not a not a bit. Anyway, I wonder if they remember you. I, well, I don't know. I worry about that. Maybe you know, if you you know dust maybe, that up. Maybe they've been letting me. I mean, it's been a number of years now. Maybe they've just been letting me get uh, complacent. Now we know MC will remember you for certain because he was really upset with you. Who? MC Hammer? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. He was very upset with you, but his peeps mm-hmm. yeah. might have new peeps now. That's, they might not pick up on it. That's what I worry about. So you might slide under the radar this time. And of course, there's my alter ego, M. Sizzle, and uh, even the people's mayor Don't got involved in all that. bring him back out. No, I'm not he going to. I think, I think M. Sizzle's uh, retired. Um, some of his... He had uh, too much ego. Yeah. Yes. Yes. M. Sizzle thought he was uh, the greatest rapper alive. All that in a bag of chips. Mm-hmm. 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 So, um, <laughs> but I was reminded of that. And of course, if you're interested in the, uh, the saga, uh, that I had with, uh, MC Hammer, if you, uh, go on YouTube, actually, if you go to my YouTube channel, IPM Nation, you can, you can find all of that. Just do a search. Just do, uh, just search uh, MC Hammer, Matt Connerton. Uh, it'll all come up and just... Uh, it will. Wait till you see. And, and, and you'll understand why I was uh, spending my days living in fear and uh, quivering with the uh, anticipation and dread of, of what I thought was going to be my impending doom at the hands of MC Hammer. Anyway, so apparently... But the, <laughs> the, the other thing that, that uh, struck me about this uh, uh, Drake and uh, Kendrick Lamar beef... Um, I feel that uh, this this whole concept of uh, beefs and hip hop has changed over the years because I seem to recall, and uh, those of you uh, who are old enough to remember, of course, uh, back in the '90s, you know, we lost a couple of big, you know, we had the whole East Coast West Coast thing, and and we lost Biggie, and we lost Tupac, and Hails of Gunfire, and uh, but when you're talking about like Kendrick Lamar and Drake, you know, there's not going to be any violence here. So. Well- I'd, I I would be very shocked. These don't seem like violent. Maybe not now. They're not violent people. But what I was interested. I mean, Drake is Canadian. I don't think they, they even yeah, like. Uh, this all started. Do you know how long ago this started? No, you know. I more, was shocked about this. You know more about this than me. I, okay. I didn't even know about this until you brought it to my attention. So, well, it's 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 really high. I mean, it's like tr- it's it's like trending number one on Billboard. Everybody's talking about this. No. This started back in 2012, and you know what it started with? DMX. Oh, DMX. I was very ah. upset. Very upset at his passing uh, a couple of years ago. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> I guess he went after Drake's character and his fashion sense, and uh, boy, they really went at it. This is So this has been going on for 12 oh. years. Hang on, we we have we have a call, and the caller ID is not showing me who this is. Oh boy, this could be MC Hammer. I could be in trouble all over again. Start it all up again. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? It's Virtual Dave Ridley. Virtual Dave Ridley. Oh my God! I thought you were MC Hammer calling to uh, kill me. Nope, I was calling to do something worse. I was calling to change the subject. Well, Dave, uh, the the format of the show has changed a bit, so go ahead and tell me what the subject is, and I'll tell you if we can uh, uh, get into that or not. Yeah, Bitcoin Pizza Day, May 22nd. Huh? 
Huh? Bitcoin Pizza Day. Are all pizzas free? Yeah, you pro- so, probably have to use Bitcoin it, to pay for them. No, I thought the Bitcoin people would pay for it. Oh, I don't know. Uh, but I do it's like going pizza. To be- Sorry, Dave, go ahead. Yeah, it's going to be a, a celebration in Keene on May 22nd. Uh, I guess the, the details are at freekeen.com. But we, we celebrate how well our currency, you know, sort of the libertarian currency is doing against the government currency, outperforming it by a factor of 60,000 to one. Well, what I am most concerned with uh, in, uh, in an instance like this is, of course, uh, pizza. How much of that is influenced by the people paying ransoms with Bitcoin? Oh, I don't know. We can't get we, <laughs> we can't get into that in any detail, Dave. Like I said, the uh, the is for, there a Bitcoin song? The uh, the format. Ooh, the uh, the format has changed a bit uh, on uh, on this iteration of the program. Although we are going to be uh, there is going to be a podcast version uh, completely separate from WMNH where we can get get back into some of these uh, these issues, Dave. But uh, but uh, but uh, anything involving pizza though is uh, is always of relevance uh, on any. Uh, format uh, of any show that i do because uh as i like to say and uh, jenny knows this of course it's my stomach's world you all just live in it as long as yeah, the pizza so has the pineapple plan, the plan will be in the future in the future what i'll do when i call i'll just call about pizza and i'll uh, tell you i'll complain about how the government is affected the price of pizza and then i will tell you how freedom is a solution um, Still the wrong show. As long as I have the freedom to ingest uh, pizza with pineapple. No, no yes. pineapple, Dave. Uh, pineapple or no? I believe, and I pineapple as, and pepperoni. I, we'll get Dave's opinion mm. because Dave, uh, I, I think uh, uh, I think you're a somewhat reasonable man. Uh, but um, <laughs> <laughs> no, we love you, Dave. You know that. But we do, we do, we do. but uh, cool uh, I, I do need to know, uh, and this will affect how I feel about you as a person. Pineapple or no pineapple. Uh, no pineapple. Oh, yeah. what's wrong with you? All right, Dave. Good. With pi- pepperino. I can't say it. Pepperino. Pepperoni. <laughs> pepperino. <laughs> pepperino. As I often <laughs> say, Dave, I'm not myself a religious man, but I do believe pineapple on pizza is a sin against God. I firmly believe that. I'd still eat it. Oh, God. Really? Why? Because it's pizza. Yeah, but... spicy and sweet. It tastes so good together. And you, you know what? You know what's the, the worst thing about it to me is you can't even like you can pick some. Sometimes if you don't like a topping, right, you can just pick it off and still eat it. And I've done that, but with pineapple, you really can't because you pick it off and it still leaves all this pineapple residue. It's, oh, it's so good. You, you can still taste it. Oh. it melds into uh. the pi- pepperoni oh, and the oh. spicy, oh. sweetie oh. numminess. Uh. So, Jeez. so no pineapple, but you would still eat it. I feel like you're you're kind of uh, you know riding the fence there, Dave. <laughs> uh, you know, but <laughs> but that's all right. But at least you at least you don't uh, you wouldn't go you, you wouldn't ask for it. if you were ordering pizza you wouldn't ask for pineapple though, correct? No. Okay. But the sa- the salient point here is that you know in, in roughly 2010 when that when the first person ever bought first Bitcoin transaction guy bought a pizza and it cost him thousands of bitcoin Uh now you can buy thousands of pizza with a bitcoin uh but over over the same time the federal government's currency has gone down in value thousands of pizzas i like the way you're thinking that might be a bit much Mm, i don't know i don't think i get storage space for that i might get into the cryptocurrency if i can buy thousands of pizzas with it dude i'll have to roll you down the street oh that's true it won't work yeah that might not work Am I going to get you in the house? Mm-hmm. I can't push you up the stairs. That's true. Maybe You'll roll back down on my head. Maybe just hundreds mm. of pizza. That'd be a good compromise. And my metabolism will abide that, I think. Now I want pineapple and pepperoni pizza. Mm, no pineapple. Yes, numminess. All right, Dave. Well, Dave, it is wonderful to hear from you. Like I said, we don't. Uh, th- there's uh, certain things uh, we used to do uh, on our afternoon drive show that we don't really do anymore. This is... Well, more, you know, we interview a lot of musicians and other creative people and so forth. So we don't really get into the political stuff in this format. But uh, there will be another uh, venue to do that uh, separate. Uh, I mean, this show will continue, of course. This will always be our flagship. But we're, we're also going to do something separate online. And uh, we will uh, certainly uh, love to have you uh, on for some discussions on that uh, iteration of the uh, program when that happens uh, at some point in the future. Good. Thanks. Yeah, I was just waiting. I knew you were on, on Saturday mornings and... 
I just waited to make sure you didn't have any guests before calling in, but I was never able to find a, a point where you were talking <laughs> politics. So I just yeah, we I went ahead and called. That. I hope that's all right. Absolutely, no, Dave. You you are of always course. you are always welcome to call us. We do enjoy hearing from you. Absolutely. We do thanks, guys. Calls. All right, Dave. Thanks for the call. Oh, do you want to plug the Ridley Report before you go? RidleyReport.com. Hum, 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 hum. <laughs> Very good. All right, Dave. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. I'm sure. Take care, man. Okay, bye. All right, bye-bye. Yeah, I haven't heard from Dave Ridley in a long time. True. I'm excited. Why? Because Jay said that really was a world premiere. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Very I happy. I love it. No, that's a love great, the world premiere. That's a great track. It's it just, really and is. It's, it's just like three minutes of adrenaline. Really, really good. Really good. Oh, by the way, hello to uh, Miriam Banish, who uh, has joined us in the uh, Facebook live chat, as well as Melanie La Liberté from the uh, great state of Vermont. Uh, if you would like to uh, join us, uh, 603-250-6007. The studio line is open, 603-250-6007. Um, but yeah, we were just talking about uh, before Dave's call, uh, this, uh, oh, yes, you were going to tell us where this uh, started. Uh, something to do with DMX, uh, this uh, feud uh, between uh, Drake and Kendrick Lamar. So I guess this all started really it doesn't sound like it started from something that was intended to be bad mm. in that um, there was a, a guy named K-Dot okay. who did like, um, he fired off respectfully threatening a barrage against the biggest rappers at the time. Mm -hmm. So he pretty much named everybody, J. Cole, Big K-R-I-T, Will, and started to just kind of tag at everybody. But... um my understanding is it wasn't taken well. So he was trying to, uh, so this guy, what's his name? K-Dot. He was trying to get publicity. He, I, yeah, apparently. I, I, I believe the young people call that clout chasing. So there, well, there were like a uh, name mentioning slung shot on Lamar's 2013 control on which K-Dot fired this off. So he guested on Lamar's and they fired off all these different names and made comments. And I don't, it doesn't sound like it was intended to be anything hard. Mm. Um, <laughs> but uh, apparently that was the start. Drake took offense. He was mentioned. And uh, they've been uh, beefing, beefing ever since. Ever since. Well, what does that have to do with Kendrick Lamar and DMX? I'm confused. So it was. By the way, I would never do the cloud chasing. It was My... Lamar. Yeah, go ahead. It was Lamar's album. And the song Control, where K Dot guessed it, I guess. Oh. And then he fired off a barrage and named a bunch of people. So Kendrick Lamar gave K Dot the venue. Right. It, it, they were like, col they collabed. Uh, yeah, they uh, collabed. Collab, yes. The young and, people say and that did too. This, uh, this, this, this track. Yes, yes. And uh, that started it all, apparently. Uh huh. And apparently, uh, somehow or another, DMX is involved in all of this. And I'm not exact. This is like trying to read the script <laughs> of a soap opera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Yeah. I'm, I'm not even remotely kidding trying to follow this. There's an article on Vulture.com if you want um, to look it up. It's extensive. Oh, okay. I mean, it, this is extensive. Oh. I guess DMX at one point hopped on a, a radio show. That was called The Breakfast Club. Yes. On Power 105.1. Very familiar with it. That's a, a very uh, successful show, yes. Uh, uh, Charlemagne the God is uh, the host and a couple other people. So I guess on that interview, um, DJ Envy pressed DMX about, you know, what was going on with Drake and Lamar. And I guess DMX kind of shrugged his shoulders and said, uh, I don't like anything about Drake. I don't like his, oh no, you know, voice. <laughs> I don't like what he talks about. I don't like his face. I don't like the way he walks. Like nothing. Wow. I don't like his haircut. I'm a let me stop right there. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. DMX, he went in. I think they say that, too. He went way in. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, so that wasn't taken too well. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So then I guess when DJ, DMX, rather, did another appearance, he went on Woollywood. And he told DJ Wu Kid that his issues with Drake ain't that serious. And then started telling a story about a girl who had gone on tour with him. 
and then curiously decided against stirring more drama and kind of dropped the subject. So there's a girl involved here. Of course. There's always a girl. Of course. There's always got to be a Yoko in there. So most people, I guess, thought that the interviews were kind of funny or fun. Yeah. Um, and then I guess there were collab- continuing collaborations with Kendrick Lamar and DMX. And I guess uh, Kendrick did something called Poetic Justice. Yeah. And somehow that gets involved in this. I kind of lost with that. Some of this language, I'm trying to skip around here because um, let's just say that Vulture doesn't uh, cut out any bad words. There are words we just cannot use in this venue uh, to use the, uh, I'm trying to appeal to the the, the French people. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is just, it, it's kind of hard to follow it all. So I guess, all right, so DMX, both of the DMX interviews were hilarious enough for rap fans with a sense of humor. DMX was legitimately funny. Now, to appreciate the sad boy being taken down a peg among those people, Kendrick Lamar, despite collaborations in 2011-2012 on Drake's Buried Alive and Kendrick's Poetic Justice, respectfully, Kendrick would pop in on the show and joyously tell the story of first hearing X's Breakfast Club interview. After a long night on tour, Lamar was woken up by his crew losing their minds. I'm wondering why these... And in the front of the bus, just cracking up, hitting walls and stuff. He said, swinging his arms. I'm like, dog, what the, you know, you, you know, talking about, they muted the stop laughing. And I just hear X going off on the laptop, just spazzing. Yep, that was it. After the moment, the two would never make music together again. Oh, my. Yeah. You, you know, uh. The, the the thing about it is, and, and people need to remember, you know, words, words can, can hurt. Now they can also heal, but, but, but they can hurt. And, um, well, these guys have been tossing words at each other and, apparently for 12 years. And they're artists and artists are very sensitive. Um, it, it just goes, and there's and more people ASAP gets involved in this and then everybody's writing about everybody else. ASAP. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, is that know, how you say it? It says A and then a money sign and then AP. Oh, okay. I might be thinking of somebody else. So that's else. why I was thinking it was ASAP. I, I might be ASAP thinking of somebody Rocky? else. ASAP Rocky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I know who you're talking about. Um, the, the thing is, I always wonder, you know, how much of this is, uh, how much of it is people being legitimately mad and how much of it is people just trying to keep the beef going? Because the thing is, and, and there, there are... are this is not only in hip hop, of course, there, there are other examples of this too, um, where sometimes um, if there's conflict, it, it actually helps everybody involved because it's, um, you know, it's like, like when you do a radio show or a podcast and you have uh, some sort of a feud, uh, you know, and, and I'm, I'm thinking of somebody specific <laughs> <laughs> whose name we don't mention anymore on the show, but let's just say he's, you know, the guy from New York. Yeah. Um, sometimes, or, or, uh, I'd, I'd like to get something out of, uh, my, uh, uh, conflict with Tom Gully, but, uh, he, he won't uh, play with me. He really doesn't like you. He, no, he, he despises me. Tom Gully. Which is really bizarre. And it's all one way because I have no problem with him, but he hates me Very anyway. Bizarre. But the thing is though, with these kinds of feuds, if you play it right, everyone benefits because it creates interest. It creates buzz. It gets people talking. It's, it's, you know, free publicity. So I always wonder, like, especially like with Drake and Kendrick Lamar, like these are smart guys. Are, I, I cannot help but wonder, are either of them genuinely angry with the other or do they just keep this going because it's actually good for them? Like you said, you know, this is a big story. Um, and really all it is, it's just two guys and, and some other ancillary players who are, uh, upset with each other, but are they really, or are they just playing the game, you know? Yeah. And then they just seem to like to fire things off back and forth to each other in their songs. So there's always that crazy connection going on. But I, I wonder if this has been going on for 12 years, if they actually really don't like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's possible. How do you fight with somebody for 12 years and not end up disliking them? You can't fake it yeah. for that long. Can you? I, 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 sh- I sure couldn't. I don't I mean, see it. I'm, I'm not someone who holds grudges anyway, so it's hard to even imagine like holding on, especially because of something somebody says in a song or something, you know, 
Like, but, but, but then again, I mean, I come at it from the standpoint of, I actually, as you know, I, I, I enjoy having a few haters. It's fine. I think it's kind of fun. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? I so, think I've always had haters. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I, <laughs> you got you got to lean into it. Uh, Melanie in the chat room says, uh, sure. Words can hurt, but crowbars hurt more. That's what Oof. my, that's what my grandma used to say. Well, I, I hope there's no crowbars involved in this beefing. I hope uh, the grandma didn't hit you with the crowbar. Yes, that would be. That sounds bad. Uh, frankly, uh, that would be unacceptable. I would say. Uh, bad. I don't think. Uh, I don't it's think anyone. No violence. You know, I I want it to be a peaceful world. I don't think anyone should be hitting anybody with uh, crowbars. Uh, to to be honest, uh, you know, I don't even like. Uh, you know, we're big wrestling fans, but I don't even like when the you know matches with weapons in them. I I don't I don't like that very much. I like to see people wrestle. You know what I mean? No, yeah. but but uh, but but this whole thing. I mean, you know, it's it's helping both of them. I'm sure it's it's uh, generating interest. In, well, the uh, person of this uh, that wrote the Vultures article seems to think that it's like two worlds colliding. Yeah, has an interesting way of describing them. It says uh, these guys at the top of the mountain couldn't be on more different paths. Drake, if he came from Dot's world, wouldn't have survived given his slinky backbone. While Drake believes that K Dot's greatness is illegitimate. Because of how long he takes between albums. One is Abercrombie and Fitch and Boat Shoes. The other is White Tank Tops and Nike Cortez. Neither are really putting it on for real, but it still clashes. Mm. Interesting way of wording that. Yes. I like that. Uh, who wrote this? I like, I like well, Drake, that. Drake That's is very, thing. you know, he's Canadian and he's uh, very, uh, I think he was, was he on Nickelodeon when he was a kid or something? Drake is Drake is very safe. Was he? I think so. Something like that, or uh, or whatever the the equivalent is in Canada. I don't know. But, I hope I don't butcher this guy's name. Terracon Love is a New York senior writer, covers culture for Vulture, and that's yeah. the writer who I like that ending. I like that that imagery. We've played uh, Kendrick Lamar songs when when we, we were did? when we were on in afternoons. We would play uh, during Black History Month. There's uh there's at least one Kendrick Lamar song we, we would play. Um, and I've always liked Kendrick Lamar. I haven't listened to any Kendrick Lamar in a long time. Drake, I can only think of one Drake song I actually like. Although the one song that I like, I like it a lot. Nice for what? I've played that on the show. The radio edit, of course. Oh, yeah. But yeah. That, that is catchy as hell. It's from like five or six years ago. But Now, which one do you think is more negative? I, see, I don't perceive either of them as being negative in no. terms of their messaging or... How they present themselves. No, well, no. I mean, what do you mean? We're talking about them dissing each other in their songs. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Which one seems to go, I don't know, darker or more Oh, I don't, I don't know because I haven't listened two. to, uh, I'm just learning I about wonder. this particular beef. So. Which is crazy because apparently, like I said, this has been going on for 12 years. 12 years. 12 years of beef. You think they get tired of fighting about each other? No, like I said, although though, it's material. I mean, well, the, the, you always yeah. get the other one the, the, like kicking I said, you off. So like you come I, up with something new to write. Yeah, like I said, there's business reasons for, uh, you know, and and some people never, uh, some people never get tired of being mad at somebody. Like I said, you know, again, I'm thinking about the guy from New York. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, he's, he's gonna be he's gonna be mad at us till the day he dies. <laughs> you know. Oh well. Well, Sounds like once Drake gets into something, though, he he doesn't like to let it go. Yeah, yeah. From what I'm seeing, because it, it this article goes into some more details, but makes no makes a mention that when the DX drama started, it went down a year before Drake suddenly brings it up again on Vibe and starts talking about um, how he kind of messed with the rollout of his 2013 album. Nothing was the same. Because it may have been the loudest siren initiated the Aubrey and the Dot Cold War that Drake dropped, quote, the language on the 2013 NWTS, which came out of the gate with a sub at X at K Dot. I don't know why they've been lying, but your S is not that inspiring. Yeah. Later in the same verse, he goes into F word, any. Uh, and <laughs> well, we get we get <laughs> the idea. talking the we, we yeah. get the idea. Yeah, they, I mean, they they, they, they say let, let, let's just say calls him a motor mouth kid. They, 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 they say <laughs> they say very mean things about each other. It, it's uh, he says been dissecting your motor mouth till I break down the engine. This ain't no warning shot. This is a reveling henchman. 
Ooh, I like that actually. See my opponent, then cease your existence. Now that that that, that, Oof, that cease your existence. That's that's not too bad. Uh, I did not like the uh, rhyming uh, lion with inspiring. Uh, that I, <laughs> that I felt that I felt was cheating a little bit. I did not think that that flowed uh, correctly, and I I object to that. The, it's all in where you put. The emphasis I know. on the syllable. <laughs> yes, the emphasis. You have to put the emphasis on the correct syllable. But uh, yeah, I didn't. I didn't like that. But that last one there that you read. No, that's that's yeah, good. That was pretty good. That's good. Been dissecting your motor mouth. Uh huh. I like that. Yeah, yeah. This ain't no warning shot. This is a revelant henchman. Yeah, that, that that's that's the line that, you like that, right that, there. I like that that's one. That's the one. I like that one. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. That's, revelant henchman. That's good stuff. Mm. Yeah. Those, those, those are nice sounding words. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh, yes. I don't see this ending anytime soon. Sounds like these guys are going to go back and forth until they stop writing. Well, not necessarily. Eventually, uh, sometimes uh, people make up, like uh, Nas and Jay-Z. How long, a, were they, how long were they beefing? They, they were beefing a long time. And then uh, I think Nas uh, signed to uh, Jay-Z's uh, record label or, oh, wow. or management team or something. Yeah, but he's a unique individual in that I noticed that he actually Which goes, one? Nas, mm. he's to me. He seems to go out of his way to try and be positive at all times. Even when I've seen him in the face of something negative being said to him, he tends Nas? to or, little or, Nas or, X. Or, no, 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 that's a different guy. Oh wait, L- little Nas X is a very, very different guy. Oh, no, I'm talking about Nas, N A S, Nas. Oh, one of the best. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, then I have no clue what I'm saying anymore. Yeah, I don't know who L- little Nas X. Just you know, I like him. Oh, he's, he's fun he's, he's fine, and he's I, happy. He, and he's he's controversial, but I don't even in the face of negativity, he yeah, flips yeah. it. Yeah, I no, love it. No, uh, Nas and uh, Jay Z had a, a long-standing feud, but then they I had forgot about the other Nas. Then they had some kind of. Sorry. Uh, they they finally, I, if I remember correctly, it culminated in a they had a public uh, rap battle, and they ended up shaking hands at the end of it, and then they kind of just became friends. Well, that's so, cool. Yeah. I don't see these guys doing that. No, they probably will. Who knows? Twelve years of writing about each other. They've never sat down. It seems. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think I think Nas and Jay Z probably feuded for more than uh, twelve years. Yeah, it can happen. Well, anything's possible. Yes, anything's possible. But if the answer is what you say, and they're just really enjoying being attacking each other for the fact of making money, then I don't see an end. If that's the case. Uh, Miriam in the uh, chat room says anything can be a weapon. Uh, I just read a news story about a woman who stabbed her husband with a ceramic squirrel uh, because he failed to bring home pizza. Um, that's wow. uh, listen. I, as you know, I'm passionate about pizza, but I don't think I would uh, stab somebody over it. Uh, well, maybe if uh, like I ordered it uh, a certain way and, and it came with pineapple, I might. Uh, I'm the only one that makes you pizza. No, you didn't talk about stabbing nobody. No, no, no. But I'm just saying, if uh, like if I was having pizza delivered and and the uh, <laughs> the pizza guy brought me a, a, a pineapple pizza, I would probably take great offense. I don't think I would. I, I'm not a violent person, but I would take great offense, and I might give him a stern talking to, or at the very least, uh, glare at him uh, m- menacingly. Go ahead. No. I'll just eat it by myself. <laughs> uh, Pineapple on pizza is nummy. Uh, Jay Bello says, uh, I always keep a ceramic squirrel in my truck for protection. I think that's wise. Uh, I have a uh, ceramic uh, cat, as you know, that I keep in the car, um, which doesn't sound like it would do much. But uh, according to the description on Amazon, it does shoot out lasers. <laughs> but I haven't tried it yet. Lasers come out of its eyes. Really? What, yeah. If you, if you, what, what it's supposed to do is you, you pet it. If you're in danger, right? Someone's approaching you. You start petting the ceramic cat. It begins to vibrate because it's purring. And that is supposed to scare the person who's coming toward you. And then if they uh, continue to advance toward you, it automatically shoots lasers from its eyes as it hisses. Ooh. Yeah, like it's it's very factor. the uh, technology that is available is uh, I mean it's an amazing time to, to be alive is what I'm saying really <laughs> because uh, you can do that kind of thing laser cat eye. but I don't know if it actually works it takes uh Meow. it takes a couple of double A batteries and it it's, That's a, it? it's supposed to protect you yeah do they come in a pocket size model uh do they make teacup kitties there's a, there's a kitten you can uh, get a ceramic what is uh, the kitten. smallest kitty I don't know that could be fun. Uh, Melanie Law Liberty says, can you look at the camera and glare 
uh, menacingly so we know what you mean. Uh, let's see. Well, for those of you watching on Facebook, I suppose I can try. See, what I do is I furrow my brow and, uh, and then I look menacing. I'll tell you what, if I looked at uh, a pizza guy the way I just did at the camera, they'd probably just uh, drop the pizza and run away in fear. And I'd be stuck with this pizza that I don't want, but at least I wouldn't have to tip them. You can get me a rusty spotted cat because they only weigh between two and four pounds. Yeah. And then I could carry that around. Oh. Um, and then if somebody upsets me, it can scratch it. Right, right. Be like, just take out the little pocket kitty. Meow. But how do you uh, how do you get the cat to... Uh, like, would you throw the cat at the person and no. hope that they? Because well, how would just you get a gentle squeeze? But how would you get the cat to uh, scratch them? Just a gentle squeeze, you oh. know, and then the claws come out. Okay. You train it. Little, yeah. Little squeeze and. Well, you'd probably want to have some sort of a a pole or something that you could put the cat on, so you because I don't other, want a dancing cat on a pole. No, but I'm saying though, I want to. Because then you you put the cat at the end of a pole, and then you no! you, sw- you swipe at the person with no! the cat on the pole, and as their claws are extended, it will uh, scratch the no. other person. Because otherwise, it's for close combat. Well, I was gonna say, I mean, you know, that person's gonna have to be pretty close for you to scratch them well, with the cat that you're just close. holding the cat. Well, you have to keep it close. Well, that, but then how's that gonna help you? So it's the last resort. Okay. When they get close to you, then it, right. You so give it a gentle squeeze and. The claws come out. So if you're being physically mugged, you know, the, 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 hopefully the cat out comes the out and, and scratches. And yeah. a gentle squeeze and yeah. claws come out. So you would tell Spicy. the uh, you would tell the, the, the person approaching you, I've got a I've got a kitten. It's I have only to go two to pounds. India. Huh? I have to go to India. That's where they have them? Yes. Okay. It's on the Indian subcontinent. Uh huh. The rusty spotted cat. They're like little guineas. Yeah. Two pounds. I'd be, I'd be afraid of, uh, I'd be afraid of having a cat that was uh, really tiny. Why? Well, just you know, they get caught in furniture or something. I don't know. They 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 fall into the couch cushions and then you can't find them because they're so small. But if they're so small, they can fall out the bottom and climb out. Well, I suppose that's true. See, uh, Rocky Huber uh, Rocky joins us in the Kitty. Facebook live chat. Says big fan. Hello, Rocky. Hello. Uh, Miriam said there was also a news story on Stern many years ago about a man using a frozen squirrel as a weapon. Squirrels as weapons seems to be a theme she's finding here, which is interesting. I've never heard of such a thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I know you don't want to be bitten by one because they often carry disease. Yes, yes. I've heard that. Uh, well, we are already approaching the uh, the top of the hour, but I will just say I hope that uh, I hope that Kendrick Lamar and uh, Drake can uh, come to some sort of a detente. Bye. But uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what the future brings. They should go to India. Why? They could go up to the Temple Mountains with the monks, and they could teach them to chill and find peace together. Yeah, I don't know if that'll help their art. And if it doesn't work, they can pick up a kitty and they can scratch each other. Oh, my goodness. Now, that's that's terrible. We, <laughs> we don't want to encourage that. Kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Now we're killing birds? Oh, well, uh, yeah. That's, that's not good. That's not good. To feed the kitty. Birds like to kill. Uh, I mean, uh, cats like to kill birds. True. They're not me. That's why or you don't. Cats. That's why if you, you know, if you have a bird and you have a cat, you want to make sure the bird is uh, safe in the cage. Although I don't agree. <laughs> I could never bring a bird into our house because I, Prince would have lunch real quick. I could never do it because I don't, I don't understand. That's something I've just never understood. Why? No offense to anyone who has a pet bird. I don't know why that's okay to put a bird in, in a cage. I genuinely don't they know. They don't leave them in there all the time. I know, but they got wings for and a And they're reason. domesticated. To me, it just seems so cruel. That they can't fly. Yeah, they put a bird in a cage. They actually cut their wings of, so of, they can't of, fly. Of all the animals on earth to put in a cage, a bird. Doesn't yeah. that seem wrong? Yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't know why people think it's okay to do that. I've you never can't understood. let them out to let them fly because a lot of times they clip their wings so they can't. I know. It that's, is actually pretty sad. That, that's awful. I don't get it. Again, no offense, to anyone who, no offense to anyone who has birds, but... 
Why is that okay? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, all right. 